Hello, welcome back. Or welcome if you were just seeing my face for the first time ever. Today I'm testing some more products that have kind of blown up on the internet over the past few weeks. I like to do these kind of videos so that I can test things just so maybe you don't have to. I mean, by all means, feel free to test them as well, but this is just my opinion. Today's video is sponsored by Dermatica again, which are one of my favorite skincare brands. I have used Dermatica now for actually years and I just turned 27 and when I went to the US recently when I got to the passport control where they have all the really scary people that ask you really interrogating questions the woman there was like how old are you have you finished school and I was like uh mom I'm 26 years old but I will take that as a compliment and put that down to my skincare routine so clearly I'm doing something right with my skin and then obviously when I sit down to talk about my skin I break out on a spot but hey it happens my skin is not perfect however my little personalized formula I find helps so much with fading the scars on my face just generally keeping my skin texture smooth also with fine lines as well I used to have so many more on my forehead and I actually had people DM me on Instagram and saying have you had Botox but I can promise you, like, this is my evidence. I have not had Botox. I don't know why I did this, but when I was a teenager and in, like, my youth, I used to pose for pictures by, like, my forehead would constantly be up and constantly be wrinkled. And I look back on those photos and I had more wrinkles on my forehead back then than I do now at the age of 27. And this little bottle has a personalized formula. So whatever your skin concerns may be, whether it is acne or fine lines, aging, pigmentation, they can help with a whole range of different skin concerns. But you go on their website, you put in pictures of your skin, you obviously describe what your skin concerns are. And then their dermatology team assesses that and puts together a little bottle for you that you get on a monthly basis. And the reason why this works so well is because they use evidence-backed science-backed ingredients that you can't just buy over the counter. So the ingredients you find in this are gonna be stronger than like a regular skincare product that you just pick up at a shop. So it's those powerful active ingredients that really help to make a difference. And if you go on their website, they have so many amazing before and afters. And my skin has changed over those years. My formula has changed over those years. Whenever I've had any queries or concerns or I've wanted to switch up something in my formula and try something new, you can literally just log into your account. You can speak to their dermatology team and they will put together a new formula for you to try. So from that side of things, it's also great because you have that access to their dermatology experts if you have any questions or concerns. They do also make other skincare products as well. They have cleansers, they have moisturizers, their SPF I love, their vitamin C is incredible. And they have offered me a discount code, which is SOF50, which gets you 50% off your first three months, which is a really good deal because it's usually $24.99 a month. So if you wanted to give it a try, then you could use that discount code. And I mean, you can cancel at any point. And obviously with that, you get the online consultation, which is reviewed by their dermatology team. You get the 24 seven access to their dermatology experts and and you get your little personalized formula, which will come through your door once a month. So with my little personalized formula, I like to take one pump of this at night. Obviously it depends on your formula and it depends on your skin. For me personally, I like to put down a layer of just a basic moisturizer. And then I just do one pump and spread this evenly and then just rub it in, being careful to avoid around my eyes and my mouth. I do just want to say as well, well, you should be wearing SPF daily anyway. But if you are using stronger active skincare ingredients, please make sure that you're using SPF every single day. Yeah even when it's cloudy I'm off to bed so if anybody is interested I will leave the links down below and thank you to Dematica for sponsoring this video I've just primed my face with a little bit of the elf power grip with 4% niacinamide because I'm also going to be using the elf camo hydrating CC cream so I thought maybe this would make a nice little pair we got this in the UK I think it was January or was it December either way it's pretty new and I have seen people talking about this however my perspective is going to be from oily skin I like the original elf camo CC cream that one is more on the matte side and it kind of is more like a foundation when it says it's a CC cream. I don't even know what that kind of means. It's supposed to mean color correction cream but uh I don't know to me this kind of just felt like a foundation the original I mean. This new one is infused with hyaluronic acid, tremella mushroom, niacinamide and vegan collagen. It says to apply one to two pumps and I'm gonna wear the shade 150 fair. I still have a little bit of tan left on my neck. I do want to say though the shade 125 fair is pretty much my perfect match for when I have no tan on at all. I've probably got about a pump there so let me just put this on. It definitely feels a little bit thicker than your average skin tint kind of thing. Hopefully this is going to be a good shade. And I'm just blending this in with, this is a Sephora brush actually, the 93 brush. Let's see how it covers this scar, which was actually the tiniest, wow, actually that's done a really good job. I was going to say, it was the tiniest little spot that I had on my cheek and I was like, no, I want to get that on my face. And then it turned into a massive scar, but Wow, I'm actually really impressed because that was quite dark and that has almost fully covered it. Let's see. Let's see this spot here 
let's just dab it over that. I have used the lighter shade a few times, but because my skin's been so good recently, I didn't really have anything to cover, which I mean, that is a flex in itself. So I didn't really have that moment of being like, wow, that's done a really good job. But that has done a really good job at covering. You can still definitely see this spot here. This one here, it's done a really good job at covering that. So far, my thoughts from wearing this a few times, I am gonna actually check in, in later in this video and see how this lasts on my skin. I have noticed when I wore this before that after sort of like six or seven hours, it starts to break down a little bit. So I'm interested to see what it's gonna hold up like today. I've just turned down the brightness so you can see a little bit better, but just initially from the first application, I think the finish is really nice. It's not the thinnest in the world. Like you can definitely tell that you're wearing makeup. I wouldn't go as far to say that it's weightless, but it definitely looks really nice on your skin and just makes your skin look very healthy. I think it looks nice. It looks like a nice foundation. It's on the glowy side, but it's not super glowy and it doesn't feel oily or anything. It just gives a nice sort of radiance to your skin, which I like. I do think it looks lovely, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend it if you've got super oily skin. I just don't think it will hold up throughout the day. But then if you do have super oily skin, you're probably not gonna go for a hydrating CC cream with a dewy finish anyway. I don't know, has anybody else tried that? What do you think? I've seen as well that Revolution have just come out with a new foundation, which looks really nice actually, according to TikTok. Adding a little bit of concealer. But Revolution are actually under new management. So I'm interested to see where the brand is gonna go. Curious. They've definitely made some questionable decisions in the past. But let me know if you want me to try that new foundation because it does actually look really nice. A little bit of bronzer. This is the Studio London one. It's the bronzing cream in number four. Really nice underrated bronzer if you're in the UK. If you're not in the UK, I'm very sorry because <laughs> I don't think you can get this anywhere else. It's just very natural and layers quite nicely. For my blush, I have this from Lottie London, which is called the Blush Bestie PH Color Changing Cheek and Lipstick. The packaging is this cute little heart, but when I opened this up, it's yellow. Like the blush is yellow, but it's one of those like pH reacting ones that then changes to pink and it really does go quite pink. And I've seen a video, oh wow, that's not coming off very easily. I saw a video on TikTok that had 5 million views of somebody testing this blush and they did send this to me in a PR package. So I thought I would test it today. Okay, a lot of color just came off on my brush. And interestingly, when you use a brush, it seems to turn the end of it pink. But when I put it on my skin, it didn't do that. So let's dab it on with a brush on this side. Oh, okay, that's not as bright as I thought it was gonna be. Let me just take some more. Huh, you know what I quite like about this? The texture isn't super sticky because sometimes these kind of formulas, the texture's almost like lip balm, whereas this one isn't. Because it's one of my pet peeves when blushes are like lip balmy and sticky and they take off your foundation underneath, but that's nice. I mean, it's not gonna take over any of my other blushes, I don't think, because you do have to build it up a little bit more, but let me just try and draw it straight onto my skin and see what happens. Oh wow, yeah, that's a little bit more intense pigment. And then let me see if I can blend it out. That also definitely worked. I think I prefer though taking it on my brush because then you're less likely to swipe away any of your foundation, but that still looks nice on that side. I like it, definitely works. I think the yellowy pH color changing thing is a bit of a gimmick, but the gimmick works because every time a brand launches a pH color changing thing and it starts off one color and then changes to another color, it always seems to go viral. So they're clearly doing something right. However, in terms of what I use this on a daily basis, probably not just because it's not as pigmented as my other blushes, but it's definitely cute. It's nice. I like the color. This product could go either way. It could completely ruin this video or it could make it great. I was actually recommended this on Amazon when I was buying some other stuff and it just popped up saying you may like this. And it is a freckle liquid air cushion, waterproof and long lasting color development, whatever, that, I mean, whatever that means. So I was like, oh my God, I've never seen that before. I need to try it. So I ordered it and then I went to have a little look on TikTok like, oh, I wonder if anyone else has reviewed this new and interesting product. And so, many people have reviewed this but years ago but I don't know how I missed that I'm gonna test it now so it comes with this little stamp which I did test this on the back of my hand and I will say it was then quite difficult to get off my skin so this is why I'm a little bit concerned about putting this on my face so you get this little spiky thing which is actually kind of hard to grip onto if you have long fingernails and then you lift out that part which oh my god that's covered in the product already and then on the inside it's like a sponge a spongy cushion type thing. You're supposed to dip this into the sponge and then it gets your little freckles on here and then you stamp it onto your face. However, they're quite big freckles. And the reason I'm doing this before I set my face is because I have a feeling I'm gonna need to go over it with a sponge because they look like they're really big freckles. This could go so horribly wrong. Um, okay, maybe I dab it on my hand first and then go in on my face. Wish me luck. Oh my God. No, 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 no,
don't know. I didn't mean to get it under my eyes. Oh, man. This is the problem. This thing is too big because I just got that under my eyes. Oh, no. Whoa. And then once it dries, it really seems to dry. I now have like spots under my eyes, which I pretty sure that does not look natural. You know what I might actually do? Let me stamp this on and then use my sponge to blend it out. Take some little frecks. I think this would be better if, if they made the little bits on the end of this half the size. I could see this being such a good product. Try doing some on my nose and then, why is it not? So let's now try and blend this out. Um, it just doesn't really want to blend out. They are not, like once they're set, that is not really budging. I'm having to really like push on my skin to try and get them off. <laughs> no, that is such a flop. Get off me. It mostly looks like I've had mud splashed on my face. Like it does not look like natural freckles at all. That's probably about as good as I can get, but I think I'm now gonna have to go back in with a little bit more concealer. Probably a little bit more of the foundation around my nose because a lot of that seems to have come off. So maybe this will help actually to kind of cover it up a little bit. Okay, I, I kind of just got rid of all of them really. Normally I would use a little angled brush or like the end of an angled brush to do some little freckles. So I'm just gonna take one. This is the little Madison Beer angled brush with Morphe. I'm just gonna dip it in and see if I can get a better better result that way. So I can at least make use of this product. Yeah, that works so much better. It's just the tool, like the, it's a great idea in terms of the applicator, but they just didn't really execute it very well. I don't know, has anyone tried that one and had it turn out successful? Because that was a bit of a disaster. And I did think for a second there that I was gonna have to take off my whole makeup and start again, but I think I managed to save it. I guess one of the benefits though, if you want long lasting freckles that look like that, they definitely don't budge once they're, <laughs> once they're on there. Kind of removed most of my blush though. So let me just go back in with some of that. Just gonna powder, I'll be right back. I'm using this collection one, the blurring setting powder. I did just use a little bit of powder foundation on this spot because after I'd powdered it kind of poked through a little bit more because it is like a big old mountain on my face. And then I'm just using this little Charlotte Tilbury palette, the Hollywood Blush and Glow Glide palette, which was one of the Christmassy sort of ones. And I'm gonna keep you zoomed in because next up I'm talking about eyebrow products. And I did speak about these on my Instagram and my TikTok. However, not everybody has Instagram and TikTok, so I thought I'd also put them in this video. These are new from Benefit and it's their Precisely My Brow Detailer Pencil. And also they've got a Precisely My Brow Wax, which is a tinted brow wax. I've got the shade 4.5 in the wax and I thought I had 4.5 in the pencil, but I have shade four in the pencil. This is the tiny little brow pencil I've ever come across in my life. It's the thickness of like a teeny mechanical pencil. I don't know how well that's gonna come across on camera, but let me go get some others to compare. I wanna show you this comparison because there were a few people on my video saying there are tons of brands that have micro brow pencils. Like literally most brands have one now. But I was like, no, no, no. I don't think you quite understand how tiny this one is. I'm doing a bit of research. Most of the micro brow pencils that I have and like most of the brands make, like pretty much every brand has a tiny brow pencil these days. They're around 1.5 millimeters thick. This new Benefit one is 0.8 millimeters thick. So it's almost half the size. So just for reference, the middle one is the NYX Micro Brow Pencil, the Clinique Micro Brow Pencil. And then the Benefit one is this one right here, which as you can see, super, super tiny. I have been informed since posting this video that Huda Beauty also make one that's a pretty similar thickness to this. And the Huda Beauty one, last time I checked, it was on special offer on Boots for around 15 pounds. The Benefit one is 22 pound 50. And something that is disappointing is that with the original Precisely My Brow Pencil, which I love anyway, that's one of my favorite brow pencils. That is 26 pounds new for the regular size one. And in that you get 0.08 grams of brow pencil, which I think is pretty standard. In this new one, it may be half the thickness, but you also get a lot less product in there. So they've not made it like any longer. And it's £22.50, so I mean, it's a little bit cheaper than the original Benefit Precisely My Brow, but you get 0.02 grams of product in here, which isn't a lot. That's how much product you get in here. I do think that they should have made it maybe like half the price. It could be to do with the packaging making it more expensive because it's like a new packaging design, but it looks to me like they might be working on making it refillable because that bit does twist out and come out, but I can't see any refills on the website at the moment. And it has a little spoolie as well, but I've got to say guys, since I got this I have been using it every day and I don't want it to run out because it's just the best brow pencil I've ever used. I would actually go as far to say that because of the thickness of it. Can you see how skinny that little line is? Like it literally 
looks like a brow hair. What I might do, although I feel like I'm probably not organized, I was gonna say I might just save this for the front of my brows because that's where I really notice a difference. And I have gone a little bit too heavy handed with this, whereas usually I would just like do like little flicks. But can you see how that looks like a microbladed eyebrow? Let me just take the spoolie and soften it a little bit. Like you can really draw in those little hairs. And because the actual pencil is so skinny, when you twist it up, it still remains that skinny, you know? You don't need to worry about it going blunt because even when it's blunt, it's still so thin. If there is one product that could compete with the NYX Micro Brow Pen, it's this. I just wish there was more products. And then when it comes to the tinted brow wax, this is also so good. It gives a little bit of extra color to your brows, which I mean, I've done most of that with the pencil already. But if you've tried Benefit's Fluffy Brow Wax, it's kind of a similar formula to that, but just tinted with color. But yeah, this has so far been really good on days where I don't actually want to fill in my brows with pencil. I just want a little bit of extra color through them and to hold them in place. I've been wearing this to go to the gym. And I know, who am I? I've started going to the gym again. Not done that in like five years, but it's also a really nice brow gel. So best benefit brow products in a while, in my opinion. The size of this cup just makes me laugh. Like it's so big. Not a real Stanley, but does a bloody good job. I'm just gonna do something on my eyes and I'll be back. Okay, I did a bit of an eyeshadow eyeliner-y kind of thing using the Beauty Bay Wilderness palette. We are nearly there. And the next thing that I'm gonna be testing on YouTube, again, I've mentioned this on other socials, but on YouTube, I don't even think I've spoken about this. This is the L'Oreal Panorama Mascara the Volume Million Lashes Panorama Mascara. I was a little bit skeptical to try it because in the big TV sort of ad, which was also all over Kendall Jenner's Instagram, there's a couple of shots in it where if you actually pause it and zoom in a little bit, it kind of seems like she's wearing fake lashes on her outer corners, which I know they do that in TV advertising for mascaras, all the time and they have done for years. However, the thing that was funny to me was that on Instagram, Mary Phillips did a video with Kendall and she was like, people ask me all the time what lashes Kendall is wearing. She doesn't wear lashes. She's only wearing this. And I'm like, well, that's kind of ironic because in the main TV ad, it kind of looks like she's wearing lashes. But anyway, this is what the wand looks like. And somebody pointed out that it actually looks really similar to a L'Oreal mascara that they made a few years back, which had like the twisty handle. And I used to love that mascara as well. And the brush is very similar to that. And do you guys remember the telescopic lift mascara? The one that like had all the drama around it before. I enjoyed that mascara. Like it did amazing things for my lashes but it then smudged on me throughout the day so I obviously don't use that anymore but with this one I am happy to report that I have been wearing this since I got this which was maybe like a week ago now and it doesn't smudge on me which I was so worried that it might I like to kind of layer it up and do maybe three-ish layers. It does a really good job of volumizing and separating your lashes. I would say it's more of a lengthening mascara though than giving crazy volume, but you definitely can build up the volume of it. And because the bristles are quite short, I find that it grips my lashes nicely. It can get a little bit clumpy if you do too many layers, but it's not the kind of clumpy that you can't fix. Like if I get a little clump on the end, I'll just pinch it off. And as you can see, it does great things to my lashes. I have really been enjoying it and I would recommend, and it doesn't smudge on me. Hallelujah. And then the final thing I'm gonna test, I've also seen these everywhere, the NYX Fat Oil Slick Click Shiny Lip Balms. I got the shade Link in my bio, number five. And I've noticed that e.l.f. recently launched a tinted lip balm in the same kind of packaging with the clicker. Lottie London have a similar one as well. And now NYX have this one. And I don't know, is this supposed to be plumping? Does it say on the side? Shiny Sheer Lip Balm. It smells vaguely sweet, but you just press the bottom of it and then some of the product pops up out the top. And I have a feeling this is gonna be so similar to the e.l.f. one. I'm gonna try it without a lip liner first just to see how pigmented it is. By the way, I did also spray my face with the Milk Hydro Grip Setting Spray just cause I needed something for my eyeshadow to stick to. Okay, let's go in. Oh, that's already used it. Need to click some more. I don't really like these clicky packaging things cause then you can't wind it back down again. And my lips are super dry today. It does feel nice. I just wipe the excess off onto my lip. It feels like a tinted lip balm, but it has the same kind of pigment as a lipstick in my opinion, I think. And now I have some excess product that I'm just gonna have to put on because I don't want to, because I can't wind it back down again. It feels very similar to the e.l.f. ones, but this one is maybe a little bit less melty. <laughs> Actually, no, it still like melts when it touches your lips. That color is really nice. This is kind of like my perfect everyday lip color. Mm, it feels amazing. It doesn't tingle, it doesn't plump, doesn't have the minty feeling that the e.l.f. one does. It feels great, like it feels very high hydrating and that is good for me because my lips are super dry today. I'm just gonna use a little bit of collection nude pink lip liner around the edges which I should have done first but 
wanted to see how pigmented it was. I really like the formula and the smell is like very subtle. It's actually not like any of my other lip products that I've got. Like it's not an offensive smell. It's just like slightly sweet. The only thing that I don't like about this is that you can't wind it back down again. And that my friends is everything that I have to show you today. So I hope this video was helpful. Overall, judging like on all aspects of every single product, favorite product is probably the mascara. Closely followed by the brow pencil and gel. I just wish the brow pencil had more product. So that is me done. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like these kind of testing videos, I would love it if you subscribed because I post these kind of videos all the time, giving you my thoughts on new products that have just launched. So hopefully it can give you another opinion in your decision in whether you want to buy something or not. If you guys do want to check out Dermatica, I will leave my discount code and the link down below. Thank you to them for sponsoring the first part of this video. And I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.